Praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm Pastor Gemma Winger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. Hallelujah. We're in the river of life. We're going to call down the anointing and the power of God to change our lives, to deliver us, and to set us free. God is working miracles in your life. I know the waiting time has been long, that you have been tested, you have been tried, but God is going to come through for you, and he's going to work a miracle in your lives. God, I just thank you, Lord, for those who are watching. Touch right now. Let there be a release of your healing power, your healing anointing, your healing presence, oh God. We thank you, Lord. Your presence is here. Father God, you can do anything. You are a great God. You're a mighty God. You're a majestic God. And God, we believe you are moving that mountain. And we say to that mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Ask for your miracle. What are you praying to God for? He's led you into that situation, and you've come up against a mountain. And through the power of prayer, it shall be removed in Jesus' name. God, we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your touch. We thank you, Lord, for your healing power. Hallelujah. Romans 8:35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing can separate you from God's love. Hallelujah. No person, no situation, no family member, no relative, no friend, no husband, no wife. Nothing can separate you from the love of, love of God unless you allow it, unless you let it separate you. Shall tribulation... Tribulation, are you going to let tribulation separate you from God's love? Or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Hallelujah, nothing can separate you from God's love. You're going to be persecuted for the sake of Christ. Today I was on an international network, hallelujah, it's going to come out next week. And um, it's a secular network. It's a secular news network. And, you know, if I speak about the Lord, I'm going to be persecuted. But I spoke what I felt God wanted me to speak. And I just believe that God is going to use it. But you can't be afraid of persecution. You can't be afraid of standing up for what is right. Because God has a heart on the other end who is going to receive that word, that word will set them free. And it's that hard word. And you know those topics that you're going to receive persecution over. You know those things that you're going to say that, you know, you are making a sacrifice because people are going to say things about you. So are you going to let anything separate you from God's love? God is looking for those people who are going to stand strong in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. For the sake of the Lord, he says, we are killed all day long. Not physically, but spiritually. Oh my goodness. Whether it's an attack of the enemy against your mind an attack against your car, your family. I mean, Satan hits below the belt. Things that really hurt. Tragedies. For the sake of the gospel, we are killed all the day long. For the sake of preaching the gospel, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Sheep going to be killed for their wool or for their meat. He's comparing himself as a Christian to sheep going to the slaughter. Just as Jesus was as a sheep going to the slaughter. Yet he opened not his mouth. There is a persecution. There is a dying. I saw a very sad uh, post on my Facebook. It was someone from, I believe it was India... And they had gone to the next village to preach the gospel. And people came and they killed him because he was preaching the gospel. And he was a pastor and he had this nice little outfit on. 
and he had a heart to serve God. And now he has a family. Now he has children. But he has a great, great place in heaven. And I know that God will take care of those who he left behind. But I keep thinking they're just like I am. They have a heart to serve God. They believe the same things that I do. Hallelujah. So we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Through the sickness, through the attack, through the infirmity, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loves us. In that hospital bed, you are more than a conqueror. In that family situation, you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ, hallelujah, who loves you. In Jesus, you have the victory. You may not see it. I preach patience. I serve God a lifetime. Hallelujah. Praise God. Things take a long, long time to manifest. And then you have some very great ups, and then you have some very great downs. But praise the Lord, we are more than conquerors as we're being patient, waiting for the promise through Christ who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. I mean, that covers it. Death is not going to separate you from the love of God. Life isn't going to separate you from the love of God. Angels, principalities, spiritual beings, spiritual darkness, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, height, depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Nothing is going to be able to separate you from God's love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we just praise God. In everything, you have to be more than a conqueror. You have to rise above David encouraged himself in the Lord. And a lot of times you have to break through in the spirit, break through that spiritual darkness. Psalm 119, verse 23. Princes also did sit and speak against me, but your servant did meditate in your statutes. Have you ever had Christians speak against you, lie about you try to put you down so that they could get in this place of power and authority princes also did sit and speak against me but your servant did meditate in your statutes so no matter what is going on out there you are meditating on the word of the lord you are focused in on the lord you are focused in on god's will for your life, you're praying, you're reading the Bible, you're seeking him, you're getting spiritual power from the word of God, and you're going to feel different. Psalm 119, 25. My soul clings to the dust. Quicken thou me according to your word. You may be going through a lot right now. Some of you may be going through so much that it's almost causing you to lose your faith. Do not turn back. Keep on going forward. Keep on pressing in. It's going to make you stronger spiritually. It's going to make you a stronger person. That test is going to give you a testimony to be a witness for the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. That selfish spirit has to go. That self-centeredness has to go. Your life is in the Lord's hands. You've given your life completely to him. Now trust him, whatever he brings your way. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. Sometimes it does. Hallelujah. Trust him. Trust him because he loves you so much. Quicken me according to your word. We need God to come and quicken us and set us free and deliver us. 
Hallelujah. Praise God for his quickening. Praise God for his miracle working power. But you cannot do it on your own with your own power. I hear of people and they have children and there's issues with the children and we've tried this and we've tried that and we've tried the other and nothing is working. Try God. Try prayer. Try putting your faith in the Lord. Try praying with those children. Only God can soften a heart. Only God can change a heart. Only God can bring peace where there is chaos. God is going to quicken you and make you alive and bring you joy and peace. 42, 119, Psalm 119, 42. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproaches me, for I trust in your word. That person who reproaches you, that person who comes against you, that person who lies about you, that person that says, where is your God? If your God were here, he wouldn't have let that happen to you. Hallelujah. I, so shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproaches me, for I trust in your word. We're just trusting in God. We're just trusting in his word. We're just trusting in his blessings. I trust in his word. I trust in his will. We have to trust. And the Lord wants to increase your trust. You have to give it to God. Some of you feel like you're on the verge of a precipice, that you're just about to fall off that mountain. Hallelujah. Just trust God. He's going to provide for you. He's going to take care of you. I will trust in the Lord. I will not doubt God. I will hold fast to his promises. I don't care what's taken away from me. I don't care what's given to me. The Bible says that everything that can be shaken will be shaken in your life so that those things which cannot be shaken shall remain. You thought you had your health? The enemy's going to try to come and take that away. You may be that person who eats right, who exercises, and then bam, the enemy attacks your health over and over and over again. Probably means you're going to have a healing ministry. Hallelujah. But know that God is quickening you. God is healing you. He's not going to leave you in that, um, hallelujah, situation of infirmity. He's going to raise you up off of that sick bed. He's going to strengthen you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to quicken you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He is here. He is in this place. Hallelujah. Verse 64. Thank you, Lord. The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. The mercy of God the love of God. God wants to show you his loving kindness, his compassion, his mercy. The earth is full of the mercy of the Lord. And we praise God. He's going to have mercy on you. There are situations where you just plead for God's mercy. God, have mercy. Let me live and not die. God, have mercy. Heal me. Nobody deserves it. Hallelujah. It's just the mercy of God. It's just the goodness of God. It's just the compassion of the Lord. It's just his loving kindness. He's so good. He's so merciful. He's so wonderful. Before I, verse 67, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I've kept your word. And the Lord's been teaching me, hallelujah, about affliction. Before I was afflicted, I was going astray. I was doing my own thing. I was running my own program. I was calling the shots. Then all of a sudden, I was afflicted. What's an affliction? A trial, a tribulation, a problem, an issue, whatever it is. But after that affliction, what do we do during the affliction? We pray. 
We cry out to God. We can't do this in our own power. And when we realize that, then we get our life right, we start acting right, we start listening for the voice of God and follow his leading. Praise Jesus. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, that means after I was afflicted, I have kept your word. God knows how to speak to his children. You know, all of a sudden something bad happens. They're like, you know, I really shouldn't have done that. You know, real, um, you know, I knew that that was wrong, and I did it anyway. God knows how to get your attention. He just wants to humble you so that you cry out to him, and he can move in your life, and he can touch you. Verse 69, the proud have forged a lie against me but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. The proud have forged a lie against me. You know, I knew this lady and she had a really big house and there was a vacant lot kind of catty corner to her house and, you know, she felt like she had some proprietary right over this lot, telling them not to build there. Pride. People are going to come against you in their pride. Stay away from proud people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The proud have forged a lie against me. It's not going to be the humble. It's not going to be the loving, the giving, those with a servant's heart. It's going to be the proud. The proud are going to come against you. So don't have pride because the minute you have pride, your eyes are blinded. You don't see. You don't see all the details. You're so consumed with yourself that you can't see outside of yourself to figure out what's going on with that person. What is the Lord showing you about that person? Because it's all about you and the attention being on you instead of the attention being on the Lord. So we repent of our pride. If you want your family to be blessed, the Lord is showing me there's a man who's very, very proud. And because of his pride, he's hurting his family. And they're trying to talk to him. They're trying to say things to him and he won't listen but the lord says humble yourself because what you do and what you say is affecting your family you want them to succeed but you're being very harsh with them you're talking down to them and the lord says love them minister to them show mercy and kindness and compassion and god is going to give you the results that you want god is going to bless your family and your children and your wife are going to thrive Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. No matter what people say, no matter what people do, we are going to keep the word of the Lord with our whole heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there are times the enemy would try to come against you and want you to turn back. No, we are going forward we are keeping the precepts of the Lord with our whole heart. If the devil can't stop you, he's going to try to weaken you. He's going to try to water you down. Don't allow the enemy to weaken you or stop you or water you down. Hallelujah. Verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. Again, it's good for me that I have been afflicted. What happens when you're afflicted? You take this Bible, you start reading it, you start seeking the face of God, you get into prayer, you get closer to the Lord. When you think you're going to die, when you have a sickness that you think is going to take your life, you are in prayer. You are seeking God's face. You are getting hands laid on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's good for me that I have been afflicted. You know, hallelujah, if I, as I look back on my life, what is one word that describes my life? I would say suffering, suffering. But Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Jesus learned obedience, and he was Jesus, and he learned obedience. How much more do we need to learn obedience? Even that willful child needs to learn obedience obedience you need to make sure that they're doing what they are supposed to be doing hallelujah verse 72 the law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver 
the law, the word of the Lord, the law of the Lord's mouth is better than gold or silver. I would rather have the Lord than silver and gold. I would rather hear his voice. My joy comes from hearing God's voice. My joy comes from being intimate with the Lord. My joy comes from knowing I'm in the perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Trust that still small voice. Trust the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in your word. Praise the Lord. We hope in the word of the Lord. We hope in him. Praise the Lord. Our hope is in him. So we just thank him for his love for us. We're going to keep believing that he can turn things around. God's going to transform your life. God's going to change things. There may be nothing. There may be nothing there. But the Lord creates something out of nothing. If you have faith to believe today that God is going to create something out of nothing, pray with me. Come in agreement in the name of Jesus. God, we need a miracle. We need you to create something out of nothing. You spoke the world into existence and we speak healing in Jesus' name. We speak life. We speak victory. We speak overcoming power. The God of the universe, hallelujah, is on our side. God, you are moving. You are working. Speak to your children. Be, ble be with them. Bless them. Minister to them in the name of Jesus. And that one who fell, the Lord says, get up. Keep on going. Serve him. Keep on pressing in because God's going to bless you and the glory of the latter house, that which is to come, is going to be greater than that which was in the past. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Touch, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Oh, the presence of the Lord is here. He's as close as the mention of his name. Just say the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just stand on the word of God. Put your faith and your trust in him because he is going to bless you. And humble yourself. Whatever he has called you to, he will bring you through. And some people feel so low. I feel like somebody's on the street. But God says he will lift you up. He will turn it around through your faith in him just a little longer. And you're going to see the deliverance. You're going to see the miracle. I'm Pastor Gemma Wenger, and I have a website, GemmaWenger.com. You can go to that website, and I have meetings in West Los Angeles every Monday night at 7.30 and every Friday night at 7.30. You can also donate to the ministry through PayPal. If God is speaking to you to donate, then be obedient because God wants to bless you, and I pray that fruit would abound on your behalf. I have given my entire life, and God has blessed me. God has chosen me. God gave me gifts that no man could ever give me. So praise the Lord. Be obedient in your giving. Be obedient in your finances. Be obedient to work hard. Be obedient in your prayer life because God wants to bless you, but he's looking for a well-rounded individual who, hallelujah, is whole in every part of their life. And he wants to heal you and make you whole and make you that man or woman of God that he has called you to be. God bless you. I'm Pastor Gemma Winger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. Mm -hmm.